Shalom and welcome to Davar Word. It is my pleasure to share with you what I have discovered in my walk so that we can learn and grow together. How does God show us His love for us? God does not show us love through indulgence or gratifying a desire according to the whims and fancies of our imaginations. If God were to yield to the wishes of foolish and senseless thoughts, it would be as if God were a genie in our pockets. No, the way God demonstrates His love for us is by illuminating the way to a holy life, articulating His clear and direct expectations of us and providing us with deep, eternal wisdom from His vantage point. His perspectives. God proves His love for us in the work of Mashiach, what He has done for us to propitiate or to satisfy the wrath of God against sin. He turned away God's wrath by becoming the offering that appeases God's just judgment and righteous anger against our sin. Messiah was not only the propitiator, but the propitiation. He is what satisfies the justice of God. When God gives us new revelation about who He is and what He has done for us, this demonstrates His perfect love for us. God loves us by giving us Torah, which literally means instruction, and His commandments as to how we should live. The Tanakh, or the Torah, the Prophets and the Writings, is a love story through and through. The words reflect the passionate love of the Creator for His creatures that transcends all the disappointments and betrayals of human history. God desires for us to encounter Him, not because He needs mankind, but because we are the ones who need Him. This is the secret of revival and victory and power with God. All we need to do is receive His word, believe it and act upon it. Studying the scriptures forces all of us to ask questions about our identity and the nature of our connection to the text. We need to know our purpose, who we are, what God has said concerning us and what authority Messiah has in our lives. The word of God is never void of power. The promises of God to Israel will be supernaturally fulfilled. The word of God has in itself the supernatural power to materialize because Mashiach himself is the living word and he is alive forevermore. As the words of God dwell in our hearts and are spoken by our lips, they become the bread of sustenance and the wine of joy to us. We shall be filled with their power. We shall be changed and transformed by them. God's word will justify us, heal us, empower us and give us the victory. Promise after promise, Declaration after declaration, assurance after assurance, truth after truth, revelation after revelation. We bow humbly before the authority of the word, take it as a military command to arise and go forth in its power. This is the key to victory, to healing, to deliverance, to the supply of all needs for the redemption of the house of Israel. It is the key to unlock prison doors and to announce freedom to those who have been enslaved by the enemy. When we read and apply our lives to the instructions of God or the Torah of God, the author is always present with us. The commandments of God bring life, health, peace and such abundance that we can utilize to position ourselves to serve God. In Him, we find everything we desire. Through the words of the Tanakh and the Brit Kadasha, we are enriched in Messiah Yeshua. 
Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 18 states that when the king of Israel takes the throne of his kingdom, his first task is to write a copy of the Torah by hand on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priests. He was to copy it out by hand so clearly that his handwritten copy became the copy that he read daily for the rest of his life. The purpose of this exercise was that he may learn to fear Adonai his God, to revere Adonai his God, and follow carefully all the words of this instruction and these decrees. The king was to place first priority for Adonai to read, internalize and obey scripture. This would teach him to revere Adonai and cause his mind to follow all of Adonai's words. Many people want help to make scripture come alive for them. The scripture is already alive. It is the scripture that makes its listeners come alive. We should not just turn the pages of the Torah. Instead, let the pages of the Torah turn us back to God. Scripture is not used to seek God's direction by letting the Bible flip open at a particular passage or verse and accept that as the voice of God. Our fingers are not to walk through the sacred pages seeking some kind of guidance as we scan the surface of God's Word. We should not treat the Bible as a book of magic and delve into divination. These are examples of using scripture in a way that is detestable to God. Scripture is a compass that provides direction about God's will, purpose and desires. God will speak to us through His Torah. Scripture says that we are set free from sin, set free from Egypt into a life of liberty. We are to be born again into the family of God and start to serve Him by focusing on the kingdom to come. We become a true son or daughter of God and Messiah also makes us become heirs together with Him. Messiah becomes the inheritance of Jew and Gentile alike as we partake in the fellowship of his sufferings. All of the kingdom, eternal life, victory over sin and the adversary, righteousness, peace, joy, and all the promises of the kingdom are ours and belong to us. John chapter 10 verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice. This is a promise to all his sheep, all the sheep that belong to him. Not only do the patriarchs and all of Israel hear God's voice, but ordinary Gentile men and women can also hear the voice of Messiah. Will we respond in obedience like the shepherds of Luke chapter 2 verse 8 who were outside Bethlehem, living out in the fields and guarding their flock at night? Will we respond like Ananias in Acts chapter 9 verse 10 and say, Hineni, here I am. Each word of the Torah has the value of a pearl in an expensive necklace. We may look at a pearl necklace, one precious pearl at a time. See how each pearl or each word adds beauty and symmetry to the whole necklace or the whole passage. We need to pulverize the words, study and meditate on each word one by one. We need to personalize the verse. This is Adonai speaking to us, giving instructions on how we may serve Him in our situation, our own lives, calling us each one by name. We need also to pray the verse into our own lives. How can we meditate on the Word of God more? We can meditate during a quiet time, while doing our daily work, while waiting in a queue for something, while driving to work, while waiting to sleep, and even upon waking in the middle of the night. 
The scriptures are like an alarm clock, sounding every five minutes to remind us to start getting ready for the return of Mashiach to earth to defeat the enemy and give vindication to Israel. He will also be coming back to establish his throne and his kingdom here on earth. What we tend to do to the alarm clock is to hit the snooze button and mumble, I just need a few more moments to sleep. Friends, as believers, we should change this attitude and diligently prepare with all of our might for the coming kingdom. We should keep watch and be on the lookout like a faithful servant who is ready to wait upon the master when he returns. God's word, the scriptures, is the signpost that points us to the coming kingdom of Mashiach. The Torah is the instruction of God to love the God who gave it to us. It is the word of Adonai that shields us and gives us the very great reward, according to Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. It is the word of God, according to Luke chapter 8 verse 11. It is the word of the kingdom, according to Matthew chapter 13 verse 19. It is the word of salvation, according to Acts chapter 13, verse 26. It is the word of grace, according to Acts chapter 14, verse 3. It is the word of the good news, according to Acts chapter 15, verse 7. It is the word of faith, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 8. It is the word of the execution stake, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. It is the word of reconciliation according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19. It is the word of truth according to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 7. It is the word of life according to Philippians chapter 2 verse 16. It is the word of Messiah according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. It is the word of his power according to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. The word of God consists of black words and red words on white pages. The black words represent the living word, the Mashiach. The red words represent his work when he shed his blood for us. Set against the white pages, it represents the work of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, working in our lives, empowering us in the service of God as kings and priests, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed our time together. Thank you for joining me. I pray that this message inspires and challenges you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.